always joke and I'd say you know where's you know at least we're due once or twice a year to have someone you know call and say yeah you know I'm from Calgary and I just moved to Waterloo and my daughter trains 25 hours a week and she's national and can we come by the gym we would laugh because it never happens right it was like an inside joke and then sure enough just like that one day Sydney's mom called and said you know we're moving to the area and we've heard a lot of good things about you could we come you know and, and talk when I came out of the office, and I was just like, yes! My name is Denise Larry Townsend. Revolution Gymnastics Club is situated in the city of Waterloo, Ontario, in Canada. It's about one and a half hours southwest of Toronto. Waterloo is seen by many as the technological hub of Canada. Erin and Angela started the gym in 2003 as two coaches with zero registrants and have built it into a club that coaches close to a thousand children per session. One of these children is Sydney Townsend. Uh, we came back about a year and a half ago, moved back a little bit closer to, to home for me. I grew up in the area. Way easier a transition than we had expected. You know, you always think that it will be, there will be difficulties leaving what you know for what you don't know. Uh, but the girls were all great, the coaches were great. She settled in really quickly. The end of the last season and the beginning of this season um, was a complete high note with Sydney winning the national championships. The best gymnast in Canada for her age. This picture was a board competition. We were jumping on the beds and we had bright pink pants on. Her personality is close to mine. She's one, she, on vacation she'd be the same type of person who'd be like, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? What are we doing now? You know? So there's a, I think, kindred spirits there and we, we like each other and know each other and fun. Stand up. Stand up. I'm responsible for her bar program and her vault and her tumbling and Andrew's responsible for laying out her beam program which she implements together with Sarah and of course they um, do her leaps dance and jumps on the floor as well and then we also have a choreographer Lily who did her latest routine. She is progressing at a rate that is just as fast as any kid that would be doing 40 hours a week. In any floor routine, there are a number of components a gymnast must accomplish for it to be seen as successful. Tumbling difficult lines is the first component with twisting and flipping elements. Those acrobatic elements must be landed perfectly. This is known as sticking. The next component is dance. With dance, the gymnast strives to show precision, flexibility, perfect form and originality. All this adds up to a floor routine that is built and refined over months for that single shot in front of the judges. And this process is not always easy. We spent months, at least half of a year, just fixing that. Now you're going back to the same thing again. And yet when I ask you, I seriously say, no, you have to stop and start again. You fix it and can do it. You're just choosing not to do it. Do you agree? You have seven boxes left. 
we walk in, okay, what is it today, right? Because it's always something. And that's <laughs> the nature of, of our business and of coaching at the high level. It's you have to expect problems and then eat them for breakfast. We made a promise to each other too when before we started the gym that if the gym or the business ever got in the way of our marriage, that we would leave it. Remember that? Yeah, oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a I couple no times, <laughs> two or three times, where yeah, there's been in a few the last times nine we... years where we said, well, what do you think? Should we just go get jobs and whatever? But we weathered the storm and moved forward. Aaron spends an average of 45 to 50 hours at the gym per week. You've got to make an environment where when that person walks in the door, you can do something about it while you're still a normal person, balanced person, good person, right? And that person with that ability, that gymnast, they'll appreciate it more. About a thousand kids here at the gym at any given time, and we have one or two kids that are capable of that high level elite gymnastics at any given time. You know, it's a special thing. She started when she was three in the recreational program in Milton. She was six when they asked us if she would consider joining a pre-competitive program. And then they have to make the decision, is that something that they want for their family, for this child, for, you know, their future? And um, it's definitely not for everybody. And she has to ice her feet or wrap them in ice or you know, sometimes she's stretching because she's trying to improve her flexibility. Tori got me a lot of candy for <laughs> my birthday, so I took a picture. That was at a competition, me and Tori. Sydney lives 10 minutes away from the gym and will be at training on average six days a week, five hours per training session. Each training session is divided into a schedule that spreads her time across the four apparatus evenly, as well as allocating time for strength training and stretching. All this work and preparation will be needed during the competition season as she battles other gymnasts for top honors. She was up on the podium and she got a silver medal on one of the events. And you saw her go up and, and somebody would present and, and put the medals on the kids as they go. So they went to put one on her head and she reached out. She might have been seven years old at the time. She reached out, grabbed it, stuck it in her pocket. And so we were sitting, I remember Marcy and I sitting, grandparents were there. We had the cameras out and everybody was like, what did she just do? And we kind of waited until after she came down off the podiums and, and we walked over to her and said, kind of, what was that all about? Like, what, what were you thinking? And she said, it wasn't gold. This is the silver medal my dad was telling you about that I didn't want. And they gave me a gold medal one after. Sydney's a big goofball in the gym. She likes to play some games and she's very competitive. If you ask to see her crab walk, she'll beat anyone and even Aaron. <laughs> so... That's my cat, Smokey. And whenever we play anything, whether it's pool or, or ping pong here with the kids, that, that we've always got that attitude back and forth that you want to beat each other or we'll have little tournaments or that kind of stuff. That, that's part of the competitive nature that, that we like in the kids and that we see them compete in sport and compete in school and they're going to compete for jobs. Last game, sent the black ball. Always works hard and she's got to be the best at everything she does, so that's a good quality great kid. I call her sweetness. I think she is salt of the earth kind of person. She, she's sweet, sweet, sweet with everybody. Revolution Gymnastics Club is a place that houses dreams of the greatest competition on earth. I want to go to Rio in 2016 for the Olympics. Ultimately, I think, you know, we would love to have an Olympic team member, right? That's basically the goal for any organization that has an elite program. You know, we all design our careers around being the best that we possibly can be. You know, you've put in the time, the lessons that you've learned from your mentors and from the classes that you've taken, where you feel like if you've got the opportunity to work with somebody who's capable of reaching those highest levels, that you're ready to do your part as a coach. Each move in gymnastics is graded, A being the easiest, all the way to G, H, and sometimes I. The more difficult the move, the higher the grade, and the more points the gymnast will receive for a successful completion. Sydney has two release moves on bars. As dynamic and risky moves, they carry a D value. You're popping, like the, the swing's really good from down to up, it's going high, and okay, it's good, and then all of a sudden your leg hits the bar. It means that when you let go, you didn't go hard down with your legs and then let it pop back up and over. You just like let go and then drove your legs backwards and they hit the bar. 
You have to go heels down together to make that pop up and get your legs to go up and around. Go heel up and go up there. The level of gymnastics that we're doing here you know with regards to the kids being on the national team and the intensity that that requires to be at that level is uh substantial i mean this is not your you know normal like Ooh, i'm playing soccer and i'm practicing you know once a week and playing one game a week you know for a short season in the summer this is 27 hours a week plus you know week in week out you know five ten competitions a year international travel like i think about gymnastics all day even when i'm at school um, but I still, I'm still a kid. That's what she talked about at the dinner table or when we're watching shows at night. If there's gymnastics on TV, it's watch gymnastics. Uh, right now she's 25 hours one week and 29 the next. It can become mundane, just like it is, you know, for people going to work or what have you. And these are kids we're dealing with, they're not adults. It's hard to find a balance between life and work. It's, you know, being a mom, you want to be there for your kids all the time. Having this be our gym, our own sweat and blood, you know, I want to be here making sure things are going well. My favorite thing at gymnastics is back ducks and front tucks and front and back handsprings and front handsprings. I like any kind of flips or front aerials or back aerials and they go that. Mostly Carly and then Mom. She teaches me three days a week. I like to jump on the trampoline. I like to do swimming and grocery shopping and grocery shopping. This one was when I went to her cottage and that's her dog Chase. <laughs> this is our first year at Woodward. We were on ropes course and Sydney is currently a top ranked gymnast in Canada. Various upcoming national and international competitions will act as benchmarks in her quest to compete with the best gymnasts in the world. Once she was named to the youth national team, she was eligible to travel with Canada on her back uh, for her country, representing her country, and did so right away in November with a trip to France. She did very well. Um, she medaled in the all-round in Cumlaville outside Paris. And then the next week she went down to the south of France to Marseille and uh, she was in the top three out of over, I think, 54 kids. One of my first international competitions I went to was in France called Marseille, so. Got ready for uh, Elite Canada, used a meet in uh, Palm Beach, Florida to warm up. She won gold overall. Um, she had a mistake on a beam, but in the all around, she, she pulled it up and won gold anyway. I visualize my routines in my head and how I want to do them. But if you fall, you fall. You can't change it. At training and most competition events, coaches are there. They provide technical guidance, mental support, and any other assistance their athletes might need on competition days. At this elite level of gymnastics, coaching is a serious matter and not taken lightly. The coaches at the very top of their game in Canada, and I'm sure in other countries, are often the very same coaches. Year after year, quadrennial after quadrennial, it's, um, the faces don't change too, too much. And so I got to thinking, well, what is it that all those people have in common? At some point in their lives, not necessarily right now, some of them right now, um, gymnastics, elite gymnastics has enveloped their whole life. You know, and unfortunately some of them, it's, you know, it's wrecked marriages, pulled businesses apart. Um, it can consume you like anything. Like, you know, anything um, powerful can consume you. It can, it can take apart the rest of your life and it draws you in, it sucks you in. There's people that are absolutely committed to their work, workaholic, you know, fanatical about the sport, about what they're doing. There's, you know, people that you pretty much could say that they, they're certifiable crazy. And the other thing that they have in common is they'd all pretty much step on your neck to get where they wanna go. It's, you know, pretty hardcore at that highest level that everybody wants to win in a bad way. So, you know, those two things are kind of omnipotent ingredients. If you want to be, um, you know, one of the best coaches, you have to 
live it, breathe it, eat it, drink it, and you have to want to beat somebody. Hips up first. Hips up. When we came back, we focused our energy more into uh, preparing for Elite Canada, which is our first um, test nationally against the kids her age in her division. During competition, Sydney has to perform to the best of her ability. She has one shot to impress the judges, and many hours of preparation and work culminates in a single routine or vault. She had a lot of success. She ended up sixth overall, which was amazing. Um, and she also ended up with two medals on two of her events. So um, again, we couldn't have been thrilled more with that. She's been fortunate up until this point. There hasn't been an awful lot of failures for her. She's been pretty successful. This going into junior this year is a whole new ball game for her. So definitely Elite Canada was a bit of an eye opener for her. That, you know, she did the all around and came sixth and they gave her a pink ribbon. What is this? Preparations begin for a training camp in Russia and then nationals in Ottawa. Sydney will be competing in a new level at this nationals and this will be her biggest competition to date. I'm looking forward to competing and I'm nervous about competing. Um, I want to do well, <laughs> obviously. Sydney has this high level of aptitude, this high level of ability to to be on the national team and to be one of the best kids in the country and whatever that may lead to, be it world championships or Olympics. But the workload has to match this ability so that she's stable in competition, right? You can get the most talented kids out there, but if they don't have the repetitions and the stability, when they go to the competitions, it will be a hot mess. Well, I really like doing new skills instead of just doing the ones I already can do. Ultimately, we're there to do the best for our athletes, right? And the athletes are there to do the best for themselves. Not being able to do a skill and do it right, I get upset when I can't do that. This sport that's mixed with an artistic aspect and you're gonna have people that are close, you know, to well, what you would call an artist. You know, just the fact that their clay, um, the material that they're working with for to develop their masterpiece, it's another person. And that's what makes it tricky. Checking email or watching TV or just lots of BS, you know? Like we need to kind of get back to simplicity and do, do stuff. Drive, ride, run, jog, jump, play. Not so much text. Type, watch, you know? That's what's missing in the world right now. Sometimes when you're gone, we really, really miss you, and sometimes you get out of control. I'm like, Aaron traveled probably what? Probably seven weeks last year. At least seven weeks last Maybe. year? Yeah, out of the year. And it doesn't seem like a lot, and for adults, it's not a lot, but for seven weeks for a three year old, right? Every time you're going away, a week, a week, a week. Because when they go away, it's very important. In a world that can easily consume every spare minute of your life, the Broken Shire and the Townsend family take active steps to maintain a balanced and healthy lifestyle. We don't really cross each other's paths too much. Um, we Except kind of, when I see he's doing something wrong. Or vice versa. <laughs> if she's making mistakes, I'll let her know. <laughs> if I had $10 million in the bank, and didn't have to do anything I didn't want to do, I'd coach Jim. Not her. <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> Some people will say to us, if you're not gonna go to these extremes to produce an athlete, you're just simply not gonna have an athlete. And, you know, looking at Sydney in the gym every day, I would say, mm, I don't really agree with you. We think that we can. Sydney won the national championships last year. She's yeah. on the national team. Stephanie's on the national team. We're doing that. That next, if you want to judge us on the on the merits of if we're going to Result. put someone on the world team or the Olympic team, do we think we can doing it our way? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 
I do. Is that gonna happen? Well, we're gonna find out. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>